and he didn't know anything about molecules and protons and proteins and enzymes and but he saw this spiraling ladder and the the ancient Jewish Pharisees the ancient Hebrews they they had this 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 teaching and, 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 and most of it was in the kind of in the mystic side of Judaism but they had this teaching of the spiraling case that that led to heaven what was a spiraling case what was a spiraling ladder that Jacob saw I submit to you that I believe that it was the DNA strand of man. Father, we ask you today to anoint me in these lips of clay to speak forth your word with accuracy, with excellency, and with boldness. We thank you that as we engage souls, we understand that we stir up the demonic realm, Father God. As we teach on deliverance and demons and demonology and, 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 and expose the works of darkness, we know that we stir up a hornet's nest, Father God. So we come against and bind in advance every demon power in Jesus' name. Every spirit of sleepiness type, we break his power in Jesus' name. Every spirit of distraction, we break his power. Every spirit of confusion, every spirit that tries to twist in the air words and meanings, we bind them in advance in the name of Jesus. We bind all demonic activity. Every demon spirit, we declare you are illegal and you cannot operate in this place. And everyone who's come here carrying passengers or anyone that might have, we bind those passengers up. In Jesus' name, we declare the word preached is able to save their soul today. We thank you for those watching by streaming. We thank you for those who watch on the rebroadcast. And we ask you, Father God, to touch and save lives unveil and the truth father god reveal the hidden things in darkness father god and let the enemy's works be father exposed and destroyed son of god manifested to destroy the works of the devil and we thank you father for it in jesus name somebody say amen now we're having a, another miracle the corded mic is going out that's impossible I don't know what is going on. That is impossible. Hallelujah. But this one, oh, this is strong. Hopefully this one does not go out. Ephesians chapter 6, when you get there, say amen. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places i'm speaking about the hidden struggle that is the struggle or the fight that you have with unseen powers and last week we began to talk about discerning demonic powers if you can say with me discerning demonic powers one of those things were strife we talked about that for two weeks that is a work of demon power strife Another one is the familiar spirit, which we talked about last week at length, how a familiar spirit will come, and it will come sounding like it's your voice, but you know it's not your voice when it has the wrong motive behind it. Number three, insecurity is another way that the uh, demonic powers work. They work through our insecurities, wanting to be liked, wanting to be respected, so forth. So the enemy will capitalize on our insecurities if that is a chink in our spiritual armor. Jesus made himself of no reputation. Hallelujah. The fourth way was the accuser of the brethren. The enemy works and he comes in through accusing the brethren. And that doesn't necessarily mean like you would kind of when you hear the idea of accuser of the brethren, you think like somebody telling you something bad about somebody else. But I'm not talking about that. I'm taking you on a journey in these last few weeks to get you to be spiritually minded. What does, what accusations come in your spiritual ears 
not that somebody has said something to you, but maybe thoughts that have come into your spiritual ears about other people that were accusatory, and what is the origins of those thoughts? They might very well be thoughts injected in your mind about your brother, about your sister, and we talked about four categories last week. Thoughts accusing you. You're no good. You're not good enough. You're stupid. You are fat. Not me, but these are thoughts that somebody might have. Every time I look in the mirror, I think, gosh, God has blessed me and made me so handsome. Hallelujah. But somebody else might feel, and you know, it's funny because you got to, uh, some women who are just like so skinny like a cigarette. And they look in the mirror and they say, oh, my God, I'm getting fat. Well, that's an accusing spirit, something accusing them in their mind. There's also an accusing spirit that operates to accuse your spouse. Oh, you know, your spouse or your so-and-so. She, Like I told you last week in my testimony, I thought my wife just wanted a green card. And she thought that I just wanted a red card, a Chinese card. And, you know, so we had kind of had these thoughts that early on in her marriage. She doesn't really love you because, she, you know, I, she was trying to tell me what to eat, what not to eat. And before we were dating, she never told me that. And I thought she's trying to control me, tell me what to eat. She just doesn't love me anymore. Then one of my friends told me, no. She's telling you what to eat because she loves you. She wants you to live long. And then I said, oh, now now when she tells me, don't eat that, I feel loved. And I just hide the chips under the, under the table. Hallelujah. But I feel loved, amen. Accusing your spouse. Somebody say accusing. Accusing your leaders. And we talked about a great book called The Bait of Satan. And we talked about how this man of God, well, what was his name? John Brevere was angry at his pastor, Pastor Benny Hinn, because Benny Hinn told him, I want you to put on the... program and they planned it all out for x amount of weeks or months and then when it came time to do it pastor benny has said no i don't want to do that youth program anymore and he got upset with pastor benny and when he got upset with pastor benny he began to not receive from him anymore and you know what i think and i he might mention it in the book but i think the lord told him to cancel it to test john bevere because he couldn't have gone on to be a great man of god if he was going to carry that kind of attitude it's because somebody say amen. So accusing your leaders, they don't love me. They don't respect me. They judge me. They think I'm this. They think I'm that. It's an accusing spirit. And it's not brother or sister so-and-so telling you something bad about them. That's a carnal level, and we know that's wrong. We know we should not listen to gossip. But I'm trying to get you to, to pay attention to what comes into your spiritual ears through the mind. Accusing your mates. As we said, your brothers and your sisters. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, Know this, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. How many of you believe that we are in the last days? We are in the last days, my friend. Know this, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. It's interesting here, in verse 2, this series of scriptures and this list that the Apostle Paul gives Timothy starts off with men shall be lovers of their own selves. I was talking to Pastor Chris Palmieri, who is the Greek theologian 
He's Sicilian, but he's a Greek theologian who will be here next Sunday and Monday to teach the Word of God with us here. We're excited to have him as a guest. Amen. But he was telling me that in the Greek, the first part of this verse, verse 2, that men shall be lovers of their own selves, this actually is the root of which every other thing comes from. In other words, in the Greek it was saying, men will be lovers of themselves, and here are the traits to describe those who are lovers of themselves. So out of being a lover of yourself comes covetousness. Out of being a lover of yourself comes boasting. Out of being a lover of yourself comes pride. Out of being a lover of yourself comes blasphemy. Out of being a lover of yourself comes being disobedient to parents. Out of being a lover of yourself comes being unthankful. Out of being a lover of yourself comes being unholy. Out of being a lover of yourself comes without natural affections, being a truth breaker, because I love myself I, more than I love you, and more than I love my word, I'll break my promises. And then out of being a lover of myself becomes false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despised of good. Do you understand the picture here? All of these things are a list of what is bred by being a lover of yourself. And it was interesting about this is Satan, the devil, when he was, before he was Lucifer, the angel, we know that. And the Bible says he was lifted up with pride. In other words, he became a lover of himself. So the root of all these things that we see are actually the very characteristics that bred the rebellion of Satan against God. The fact that Satan became a lover of himself. Isn't that interesting? So now you find in this series of scriptures, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, you find this list that Paul gives. And in the center of the list... By which all of these traits begin to circle, you find this term here that says, verse 3, false accusers. Look that up in the Greek. If anybody has a concordance on your phone, you can look this up or on your computer. This word false accusers is actually translated Diablo. Diablo, or in Greek is Diabolos. How many of you know speak Spanish here? What does Diablo mean in English? Devil. The Greek is Diabolos. In the Greek, the very center of this list is Diabolos, the devil. Meaning that all these things spring from Satan himself. He's at the heart of all these things. And not only is it diabolos or the devil, what does diabolos mean? What does diablo mean? What does it mean to be the devil? Does anybody know? It means to be an accuser. Thank you. You've been to Bible school. Hallelujah. <laughs> I see you got a seasoned minister here. Amen. It means, that's why it was translated accuser, because devil actually is accuser. He could have translated it devil, but he translated it meaning accuser because Satan is the accuser. He accuses you before God day and night. But I believe he not only accuses you before God, he also accuses you before you and your friends before you and your spouse before you day and night. The word diabolos in the Greek means to besiege, to haunt. Hey, stop scrolling right now because we have an exciting announcement to make to you. We have powerful teachings and preaching and encouraging words that will change your life. And it's all on our YouTube channel, Living Proof TV. So come down, go to our YouTube channel, watch all the great content episodes we have. You will not be disappointed. 
revelation, teaching, preaching, authority in the Word of God. You're going to be inspired, you're going to be encouraged, and you're going to be ready to give the devil a black eye. So and so don't like me. So and so don't like me. So and so don't like me. So and so don't think I'm not good enough. So and so thinks I'm this. So and so is whatever. Fill in the blanks. Amen. Say fill in the blanks. Fixed on a single haunting idea and to an unreasonable degree. How do you know it's the devil? When you begin to have feelings towards people in the negative that's beyond an unreasonable degree. It's actually diabolos. And the term comes from the image of taking a ball and pounding it repetitively against somebody's mind. Almost like you would play a game we called, when I was growing up, called pinners, where we would take a tennis ball and we would throw it on the floor and it would hit the floor, hit the wall, and come back and you catch it. And you hit the floor, hit the wall, come back and catch it. And you hit the floor, hit the wall, come back and catch it. Something you could do all day long if you're in prison. <laughs> Amen. Just boom, 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 boom. That is the picture of Diabolos, to continually pound you with a certain thought. To besiege, to haunt. How do you know these thoughts are from the devil? Because they're haunting thoughts. They're feeling you just can't shake. Do you understand me? So you deal with an accusation spirit, firstly, in the outer court. You don't let it come into your mind. So that leads us to today's message, because this is all recap from last week. How do we know if it's God's voice, or how do we know if it's your voice, and how do we know it was the devil's voice? Well, number one, we said the way you could discern the voices is firstly having an unstained heart and image. Number one, to the pure, all things are pure. The Hebrew word means katharos, meaning unstained, innocent. Has your image of men been stained? Has your image of leaders been stained? And I share with you what I went through. Has your image of your women been stained? Has your image of Christians in the church been stained? Time and time again, in street evangelism, people say, oh, those Christians are phony. Oh, the church is hypocritical. Oh, the pastors just want my money. Why is that? It's because their image of God, their image of church, and their image of religion has been stained. Does that make sense? So what are other ways our image can be stained? could be stained in multiple areas. So how do we discern these voices that come to us? Well, we said last week that an untainted heart always assumes the best about people. Let's take a look here at a certain segment of verses. Amen. Chapter 13, verse 5. And I'm going to read it actually in the Amplified. It says in verse, verse 5 of chapter 13, Love is not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not provoked. You can't provoke somebody who's full of love. It's not overly sensitive or easily angered. Does not take account of a wrong that's endured. That's powerful. Every people, every person... Every people, I've been in China too long. <laughs> Every person has a tendency to count up how many things you've done wrong. But love does not count them. It says it does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love doesn't say when so-and-so gets what they deserve, it doesn't say, well, thank God they got what they deserved. Love doesn't rejoice when things like that happen. Love always wants healing and restoration. Amen. 
Verse 7, love bears all things, regardless of what comes. Say, regardless of what comes. This is the Amplified version, and I, I encourage you to memorize this in the Amplified. Love bears or puts up with all things. Say all things. Regardless of what comes, it believes all things, looking for the best in each person. It hopes all things. Yeah, he might have said that, but I hope he meant this. Amen. Yesterday, no one showed up for evangelism. And I said, you know, I'm going to just, out of my nature, I said, maybe everybody forgot. And somebody said, no, they didn't forget. They heard the announcements on Wednesday. I said, no, maybe they did. Why? Because my autopilot is to just believe the best. Amen. Love believes and hopes the best in every situation. My wife told me before we started to marry, I saw her at the, my job. I thought she was beautiful. And I said, would you like to go out to eat on Friday night? She said, oh, I'm busy Friday. I said, okay. How about next, next week I came by? I said, how about Saturday? What are you doing? She said, oh, I'm doing overtime. I said, okay. The next week came by, I said, hey, what are you doing on Monday night? I know you're busy on the weekends. How about Monday night? How about we go off to eat? She said, oh, no, I have to, my friend's birthday party. I went to my friend's KTV party. I said, all right. So this went on for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks. I did not understand no I was in love, and I just believed, wow, this is the busiest girl I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Finally, three months later, after my hundredth or my 122nd invitation, I said, hey, how would you like to have dinner tonight? And she said, why? Is it because today is Chi-Chi? Well, I, I never heard what Chi-Chi was. I don't know what Chi-Chi is, but I didn't want to say yes or no because I didn't know if that was good or bad. So I text my Chinese friend. I said, hey, bro, what does chi Shi mean? What does chi Shi mean? He said, oh, that's, that's, you know, Chinese Lover's Day. It's like Valentine's Day for Chinese. So I immediately text her back. I said, yes, yes, for chi Shi, for chi Shi. Matter of fact, I bought you a special thing for chi Shi. And finally she thought, well, you know what? I can sit at home with all my girlfriends crying and depressed, eating ice cream, or maybe I could just let this guy buy me a meal, you know? So she finally said, yes. That was our first date, and now two kids later, hallelujah. Amen. Now let's give God a hand clap for that, amen. But yeah, I, I didn't understand, no. I didn't know it was just, that was not even in the stratosphere of my imagination because I was in love, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> hey, we got a witness back there, hallelujah. Amen. So now it gets a bit confusing because if I just have to believe the best about everybody, how do I discern what's God's voice and what's, what's the devil's voice? What if God's warning me? If I believe the best and I hope the best and my thoughts are all pure towards people, and how do I discern negative situations? Praise the Lord, Bishop Joseph Castillo here on the headquarters, the world headquarters of All Nations International Fellowship. And here we have just purchased this property. It is a, a, actually a, a appraised at about $5 million. This is all of Tulsa, all of Broken Arrow. As you can see, we're basically on flatlands. We're the only hill in the greater Tulsa area. So we're here at the new headquarters of All Nations International Fellowship. And here we have the global ministry that we've come to America to establish our world headquarters here in the greater Tulsa area. Also here on the property, we have the River Church Tulsa, which is on the other side where the steeple is. This building behind us, we are, everything is mint condition, is beautiful, it needs no work, no repair. It's pristine mint property that we've just purchased, needs no work. But we're gonna put some work in, and we're gonna put some money in, because we have to transform a few of the, the sections, halls, facilities. This right here behind me is going to be on the outside gazebo, 
is going to be a coffee shop that's about the size of a Starbucks with an additional 100 seats for the outside. This will be the El Rio Cuban Cafe. We'll be serving the city uh, from this beautiful view overlooking Broken Arrow, overlooking Tulsa. If you look all the way down there, you see Oral Roberts University. Right in front of us, there's Rayma. You're going to be able to sit here in this beautiful view and have your lattes, your coffees, your breakfast in the morning, your bagels and cream cheese uh, for lunch, sandwiches, steak sandwiches, Cuban sandwiches, yuca fries, all those things. And then on the, on the next floor up is where the elementary school, River Kids Pre-K and Elementary School. So we're, the classrooms are already set, ready to go, already there because this was the school before. So if the schools are ready to go, uh, we're going to put up a sign. So we're going to need to raise a few grand, maybe $15,000 to put up a several signs. But everything is already here and we're going to be putting the school on the second floor, cafe on the first floor. On the back side is all the administrative offices. It's 25,000 square feet that God has put in our hands. Praise the Lord. So God has put this 25,000 square feet in our hands, an additional nine acres of land here. So we want you to sow into the ministry, connect with us, www.theriverchurchtulsa.com and invest into this. We're believing for somebody to give $2 million and that will launch this vision worldwide and it'll help us. But it's clothes we purchased, we're the owners and you can participate with us. Hey, Bishop Joseph Castillo here, and I trust you were blessed and encouraged, but you only got an appetizer, a little hors d'oeuvre. I'm just wetting your appetite. The entire message will be available at quarantinechurch.com. So if you go to the website and you register at Quarantine Church, you'll have access to today's teaching, plus the entirety of it, and the whole series, the archives, and everything that we're doing in this particular series, and I trust it will bless you. And when the quarantine's over, you might not have a church like this in your town or your city, but you'll still belong to this fellowship. A quarantine church is a member. You'll get Zoom calls, personal prayer times, personal ministry, prophetic healing, intercession. Be part of an online community here at Quarantine Church. And we're going to be posting new videos constantly every day, every couple days, whatever. That's going to all be on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and click the little bell icon there. So this way you'll get a jingle or a message every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. I trust you're blessed. I love you. So love and power to show us mercy ways to conquer the nation, declaring his praise, igniting with our God.